Beijing just hosted the largest humanoid robotics expo in the world, and as always, we got our eyes on the prize. Pro Robots is bringing part two of our exclusive look at the most fascinating, unusual, and innovative tech from WRC 2025. If you haven't already, check out our part one. Otherwise, let's get it. Competition in China's humanoid market is just ramping up. Just look at Ubitech that went big this year with a massive booth and a plethora of robots. The star of the show turned out to be the newest Walker S2, the world's first humanoid that can swap its own batteries in under three minutes without human help. At 5'9 or 176 centimeters tall, it walks at six something feet or two meters per second, lifts up to 33 pounds or 15 kilos per arm, squats and twists its torso nearly 180 degrees. These here hands are built for industrial work, with a powerful intellect powered by the BrainNet 2.0 AI and co-agent system for solo or team operations. Next up is Cruiser S2, a versatile wheeled service bot that easily navigates through guiding guests, delivering meds, sorting goods, or assembling products with movement precision down to a fraction of an inch or one millimeter. They also show the older Walker S1 model already in use at numerous car factories in China. It stood beside the Walker Tian Kong, a model for education and research. On top of that, UBTech showcased their latest 5th gen robotic arm with 19 degrees of freedom, tactile sensors, stereo vision, and up to a 20 newton grip. But their most jaw-dropping demo had nothing to do with robots. UBTech's swarm intelligence took all the spotlight. It was basically an orchestra of robots that walked out on stage autonomously coordinated and shared tasks. If you guys know of anything similar, shoot us an email or let us know in the comments. PND Botics made an appearance at WRC this year as well. They showcased their humanoids Adam and Adam U that look sleek, but that's just a bonus. Adam stands at about 5'3 or 160 centimeters tall, weighs 132 pounds or 60 kilos, and runs on 25 high torque modular actuators. Thanks to reinforcement and imitation learning, Adam moves like a smooth criminal, adapts, and learns in real time. Adam Yu, on the other hand, was co developed with Noitom and Inspire Robots. It has 31 degrees of freedom, vision and tactile sensing, voice control, and an adjustable height from 4'5 to 5'9 or 135 to 177 centimeters. It's built for data collection, training, and research, although you gotta be really committed to the cause since this one costs $45,000. Moving on, check out this booth from Shangdong Guaxing Intelligent Technology, one of the fastest growing robotics companies in China. It's been recognized as a national quote-unquote little giant enterprise and also a gazelle company, meaning a high-growth, fast-scaling business. Guaxing builds robots that go where humans can't or actually shouldn't. Firefighting robots that enter buildings instead of rescuers, explosion-proof scouts for chemical plants and coal mines, heavy unmanned chassis that take on the toughest, most dangerous jobs, plus military and patrol robots. In just 20 years, the company has developed a whole fleet, more than 50 different robot models, 58 of them are patented original designs. To make all of this possible, Guaxing built massive R&D and manufacturing facilities covering acres upon acres or tens of thousands of square meters. These aren't just workshops, folks. It's where robots are designed, tested, and pushed to their limits in conditions close to real world. Would you want to see how these machines are tested? Let us know in the comments. Now, what's your least favorite chore at home? Is it scrubbing the shower, cleaning the toilet, or dragging that vacuum around? Well, the Chinese company Zerith decided people shouldn't waste their energy on that. A robot should do that instead. Meet Zerith H1, one of the most useful home robots we've seen yet. This humanoid housekeeper already cleans hotel rooms better than a human. Scrubs sinks, cleans showers, vacuums carpets, even restocks toiletries. Now, the H1's toolkit includes AI that recognizes objects and tasks, omnidirectional wheels, and an adjustable frame to fit into any space. It's a camera-based loading system that copies human movements in real time at 80% lower cost than VR controllers. 
Founded this year, 2025, Zareth has already raised tens of millions of yuan, moved into mass production, and now the plan? Well, ship more than 500 of these robotic helpers by the end of the year at approximately $14,000 per. Would you get one? Let us know in the comments. Back to our favorite city. From Shenzhen, Paxini brought its flagship humanoid Tora 1, promoted as the first machine that can actually feel the world. Its palms are packed with nearly 2,000 tactile sensors that detect pressure, texture, resistance, even the weight of a few grains of rice. That's why Tora 1 can pick strawberries without crumbs brushing them, neatly fold clothes, and work with surgical precision. It comes equipped with LiDAR and a SLAM navigation system. Onboard software integrates autonomous navigation, AI motion control, visual tactile perception, and voice interaction, all running fully on the robot itself, no operator required. In just three years, Paxini has raised nearly a billion yuan from investors like JD.com and BYD, turning science a touch into a new standard for robotics. This year at WRC, one robot didn't just turn heads, it touched hearts. Meet the CareBot GR3. Gone were the cold metals and sharp angles we've come to expect. In their place, smooth curves, warm, inviting tones, and movements so fluid they looked less like mechanics and more like a gentle dance. It blinked. It tilted its head. It responded to a human touch. Not with a beep or a blink, but with a subtle, almost human-like awareness. In its walk, it could shift from light and cheerful to slow, deliberate, even weary, as if it could feel the weight of the room. And in that moment, something shifted. There was a change in the air. The audience didn't just see a robot, they felt something. For the first time, a machine didn't just perform tasks. It created an atmosphere, care, presence, quiet empathy. That's what's made the GR3 unforgettable. Not its tech specs, but its soul. It wasn't just the star of the show, it was the show. Can't skip Limx Dynamics, can we now? One of the most exciting startups at WRC this year. Their bipedal robots are some of the most kicked around bots at the show. So much so that some of the words on the street have Limx engineers blasting I Can't Dance by Genesis at the office 24-7. Onto the sexy Tron 1, equally stable on wheels, flat feet, or spherical supports. In one wild test, they put it on the back of a moving truck just to see if it could stay on its feet, and it did. There's also a version with a manipulator arm mounted on top, making the robot surprisingly functional. It's still stable, still climbs stairs and rough terrain, but now it can actually do things with its robotic arm. The startup is also working on Ollie, a full humanoid about 5'5 five five or 165 centimeters tall with 31 degrees of freedom, available in research and educational versions. Lynx is getting big on embodied AI, intelligence inside a machine's body, learning both in simulation and real world. And Liju Robotics, founded in 2016 with backing from Tencent, has already shipped over a hundred full-sized humanoids and moved into mass production. Their flagship robot, Kwafu, stands at 5'5 or 166 centimeters tall and runs on the Open Harmony operating system. It can jump, walk on sand and grass at speeds of up to 2.7 miles or 4.7 kilometers an hour and is packed with high-torque servos and interfaces for AI modules. What's more is that Liju is already collaborating with Fa Hankai, Neo, and Hire. Reports say Kwafu robots are being tested in manufacturing and service environments and not just there. And Astribot unveiled its humanoid S1, marketed as one of the fastest and most precise robots around. Its arms move at speeds of up to 32 feet or 10 meters per second, lift 22 pounds or 10 kilos each, and operate with a fraction of an inch or sub-millimeter accuracy. Videos from the company show S1 frying waffles, folding laundry, practicing calligraphy, playing instruments, even doing kung fu, all autonomously and no operator required. The robot is built on a design for AI approach, where hardware and intelligence are developed together so it can handle everyday tools and tasks at home or in industry. Astrobot plans to mass produce S1s as a true all-purpose assistant. No official price as of yet, but estimates say a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Unless mass production slashes costs, it may be a while before robots like this enter everyday households. And if you didn't know yet, we'll tell you. A lot of buzz went into AI Squared Robotics, founded just two years ago by AI veteran Guo Yandong, formerly with Expun Motors and Oppo. 
the startup has already become a major player in China's embodied intelligence scene. Their Alphabot humanoid runs on a neuro-inspired alpha brain able to perceive space, learn on the fly, and adapt to environments ranging from airports to factories to residential complexes. In spring of this year, they launched AlphaBot 2, a 34-degree-of-freedom humanoid packed with 360 vision, improved autonomous locomotion, and real-time dynamic task solving. The company raised hundreds of millions of yuan from investors, including Alibaba and Fortune Capital, and is pushing for large-scale deployment in logistics, security, healthcare, and services. Not science fiction anymore, folks but a real revolution. Robots that think, learn, and act in a world where they need to be faster, smarter, and more reliable. Is this reality, or is this Paul Verhoeven's dream? Over at the Robot Era booth, we spotted the Q5, their latest service robot designed to combine strength with elegance. This humanoid stands at about 5'5 five five or 165 centimeters with 44 degrees of freedom, a tiny waist, and lightweight arms. Thanks to its design, a navigation system with LiDAR and stereo vision, it can move smoothly even through the tightest of spaces. The Q5 comes equipped with the X-Hand Lite, a small but powerful robotic hand that can grip objects with precision and care. It's built for natural interaction, featuring an AI-powered voice engine, motion capture gestures, and even remote control through VR devices. According to Robot Era, the Q5 isn't just a prototype. It's ready for real-world work in retail, education, healthcare, and tourism. It can do its thing for up to four hours on a single charge and hold an interactive conversation without complex programming. Notix Robotics, founded in 2023 by alumni from Tsinghua University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, made waves at the world's first humanoid half-marathon. Their N2 bot finished second and wowed the crowd with backflips. In just two years, they've built a lineup from the early N1 tested on rough terrain to the Dora service bot and Hobbs bionic head with realistic facial expressions. The Star N2 packs an NVIDIA Jetson 8 degrees of freedom and a top speed of 7.2 miles or 11.6 kilometers per hour. It's probably no surprise that after the half marathon, sales spiked. They now build up to 10 robots a day and aim for 2,000 by year's end. The price tag seems almost tempting as well only $6,000. Here's another company from WRC25 and a ton twister Lawnwood Valley MedTech. They brought their orthopedic surgeon robot able to breeze through procedures in just 30 minutes instead of the usual two to three hours, which means patients spend less time under anesthesia, which leads to less blood loss, fewer complications, and faster recovery. This tech is already used in over a thousand top Chinese hospitals, helping tens of thousands of lives. At the show, Lawnwood basically demonstrated how AI and precise mechanics are changing healthcare, not in some distant future but now. And High Torque Robotics showed off their tiny humanoids and walking bots for engineers and hobbyists. For example, the 29 Degrees of Freedom Mini High, the Compact Mini Pi Plus, and the Bionic Mini Pi. These nifty little things are used for training and experiments. Open architecture and modularity let users customize them for any job in any project. This year's WRC saw Hexagon Robotics debut Eon, a new industrial robot with AI and precision sensors built for real-world factory and warehouse work. It can scan objects and handle parts. Aeon's training took just three weeks in NVIDIA Omniverse and Isaac as opposed to the typical half a year. The robot is already inspecting car parts, building digital twins of production lines, and solving other industrial automation tasks. We are here from Switzerland. Uh, it's the first time we, we show the robot in uh, China. Its name is Eon. Uh, we recently showed it to the world a couple of months ago in Las Vegas for the first time. And it's a human and robot that is intended for industrial applications. We target a variety of, of um, tasks. Uh, what we're showing here is the scanning of a car door for quality assessment. We can also do pick and place tasks, we can do inspection of assets, and we can do other operations where humans are normally used. What is the key features of this robot? The main things is our sensor array. So we have a lot of sensors in the robot. We come from Hexagon, which is a company that is known worldwide for its measurement capabilities. And we have a lot of those capabilities embedded into the robot. Okay. How long does the robot can run? Uh, 
Um, it has two batteries that can run between three or four hours, but you can um, hot swap them, or the robot itself will eventually be able to change them. How long do you develop this robot? We started development about two to three years ago, and now what you see here is our latest prototype that will be commercially available in the next couple of years. What is the key market for you to sell this robot? What are the industry and countries where you plan to sell it? So it's an industrial robot, so we're targeting different industries like automotive, aerospace, manufacturing. We will start in Europe and then we will expand to the US and Asia. Unitry Robotics brought some exciting new releases to the show. The humanoid robot R1, which you can customize with your favorite colors, and the industrial quadrupeds A2, capable of maintaining incredible balance and coordination even on steep, rocky slopes. But the hottest moment from Unitry was a real boxing match between their G1 humanoids. Beyond the pure spectacle, it was the ultimate showcase of precise coordination and lightning-fast joint reactions. For Beijing, this wasn't just a one-off stunt. Unitree has been fine-tuning the format for half a year from the spring Unitree combat competition livestream to summer appearances at major forums where the G1 was already boxing in front of live audiences. Earlier demos made it absolutely clear where this was heading. The company officially launched the G1 Boxing Iron Fist King project, promising offline matches and live broadcasts. In other words, for Unitree, this is no longer just a social media gimmick. It's becoming an ongoing series of exhibition fights that push the limits of a humanoid's reliability and stability under pressure, right on the edge between sports and engineering. Oh, and at some matches, visitors even got the chance to control the robots themselves. How much would you pay to be a robot boxing coach, just like in Real Steel? Let us know in the comments. Actually, this year, WRC became a sports arena for robots, hosting the Robo League Soccer or Football finals. The twist comes in the form of something fans have been asking for for a long time. No human operators. That's right, the robots played fully autonomously in a three-on-three -three format. In the finals, THU Robotics from Tsinghua beat Mountain Sea from China Agricultural University 5-3. All the quote-unquote players were built by Booster Robotics, but it was the teams that developed their own software. Booster's founder, Cheng Hao, said the robots played like six-year-old kids. And that seems about right. In a fun stunt that the organizers put together after the finals, a robot striker beat a real five-year-old goalie with the same score, 5-3. Meanwhile, Beijing's Yizhuan District, already China's national robotics hub, announced a massive embodied intelligence experiment. The goal is to take robotics out of the labs and into everyday life by building a one petabyte public data pool. And what's an easier way than setting up a thousand data collection points in malls, hotels, hospitals, and warehouses? The first 20 training sites and 100 data points go live this month, so August, with data sets available for purchase in exchange to train AI models. So, what do you guys think of this year's WRC? Let us know in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our socials for more from the world of high tech.